Well, good morning and happy Sabbath. It is good to be in the house of the Lord, amen? And I'm very excited uh, today that I get to work with my sister Kim. Kim, come on up here. Um, that way I'm not the only one up here in a dress, I mean a robe. I told Kim that I was concerned for her face muscles. She's smiling so big, her face is going to hurt for a couple of days. But that's a good reason to be smiling, amen? And, and I want to just, as I've gotten to know uh, the Johnson family and company over these last four weeks, um, they're a sweet group of people. If you've not taken the opportunity to make their acquaintance, to make friends, uh, wonderful group of people. And I've been very just impressed that our young adults have also been inviting friends. And Morgan, it's been a blessing to get to know you. Um, and I, I kept saying a Johnson clan, and she's a Troxler, so I had to learn the last name. I had to make sure I didn't leave Morgan out of that. But um, as I've spoken with Kim, and Pastor Evan and I met with her and went through the process of preparation for baptism, Kim was baptized years ago. She's been a follower of Jesus years and years of her life. And some might ask, well, well why be rebaptized? Was, was her first baptism not good enough? Absolutely, that's not what we're saying. But what we find is that God's Word progressively reveals truth to us. Have you seen that present in your own life? How many times have you looked at a particular passage of Scripture and you didn't quite understand all of it? You come back a few years later and you're like, ah, there's something new there for me. Well, we have those what I would call kind of micro-discoveries in the, in, the, in the journey of our Christian walk, but there are some times that it's, it's more than a micro-discovery. Right? It's earth-shattering. It, it's it's life-transforming truth. And we find an example in Acts chapter 19 where a group of disciples came to Paul and he asked them, well, do you have the Holy Spirit? And they looked at him kind of confused and they said, we've not so even as much heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul's like, well, what were you baptized into? And what he was asking is what, what truth have you embraced? Right? You heard some sort of truth that the Holy Spirit used to convict your heart and you made a decision for baptism. What was that body of truth that you embraced? Well, we, we embraced John's baptism. So then we find that Paul taught them about the life changing truth of the Holy Spirit and then he rebaptized them. And he didn't do that to wash away John's baptism, he baptized them again to baptize them into that significant truth that was added to their life. And so that's what we're doing today, right? Years ago when Jesus came into Kim's heart, she's been living that truth, but she's also found some significant new truths. Is, is that fair to say? And so today we have a little baptismal certificate uh, that I always like to think of these as a spiritual birth certificate. Um, and, and I have mine very near and dear to my heart. I keep it in my little fire safe. And my spiritual birthday was March 13th of 1992. It's when I did exactly what you're doing today, I stood up and I accepted that significant truth of Jesus into my life, and I too was baptized. And so today we have some baptismal vows. Well, what's a vow? Well, a vow is a promise, right? This is what we're saying by God's grace and the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to live my life according to certain principles. So I'm going to go over these principles. Kim has had the opportunity to see these. We met on Thursday evening to make sure she understood what we teach as the Adventist church. So, Kim, as I go over these uh, baptismal vows, if you could just affirm your acceptance of these vows, you can say amen, hallelujah, whatever suits you, okay? So, first and foremost today, we're saying that I believe there is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unity of three co-eternal persons. Kim, is that your belief today? Amen. Praise the Lord. And friends, if it's your belief, you can say amen as well, okay? We can say it together as a body and affirm the faith that we have. We're also saying, I accept the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary as the atoning sacrifice for my sins and believe that through faith in his shed blood, I am saved from sin and its penalty. Kim, is that your belief today? How about you, friends? Praise the Lord. Number three, because we've accepted Jesus, now notice how a disciple lives. It says, I renounce the world and its sinful ways and have accepted Jesus as my, I like this word, personal savior. Believing that God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven my sins and given me a new heart. Kim, I know the answer, but I'm going to ask you, have you accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, and do you invite Him afresh into your heart today? Amen. Amen. How about you, friends? Amen. 
Praise the Lord. Well, number four, what about the work of Christ? I accept by faith the righteousness of Christ. He's my intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary. And I accept his promise of transforming grace and power to live a loving, Christ-centered life in my home and before the world. This is discipleship in action. And Kim, is that your belief and desire today? Amen. How about you, friends? Amen. Me as well. Number five. This is so important. I believe that the Bible is God's inspired word. If more of the world would embrace God's word as the inspired word. Amen. But Kim is saying today, we are saying that I believe the Bible is God's inspired word. It's the only rule of faith and practice for the Christian. And I covenant, I promise to spend time regularly in prayer and Bible study. Is this your belief and commitment today? Praise the Lord. How about you, friends? So if we're going to accept God's word, we have to accept what's in his word. Notice how this is building. Number six says, I accept the Ten Commandments as a transcript of the character of God and a revelation of his will. It is my purpose, by the power of the indwelling Christ, to keep his law, including the fourth commandment, which requires the observance of the seventh day of the week as the Sabbath of the Lord and the memorial of creation. Kim, do you embrace God's laws of liberty, and do you commit to keep his Sabbath holy and to honor it in your life? Amen. Amen. How about you, friends? Amen. That's my commitment as well. Now, Kim, number seven is my favorite. I love this one. I look forward to the soon coming of Jesus and the blessed hope when this mortal shall put on immortality. As I prepare to meet the Lord, I will witness to his loving salvation by life and word, help others to be ready for his glorious appearing. Kim, are you ready to meet your Jesus? Amen. How about you, friends? I could read this better a second ago. Number eight, I accept the biblical teaching of spiritual gifts and believe that the gift of prophecy is one of the identifying marks of the remnant church. Is that your belief today? Amen. How about you, friends? Me as well. Number nine, I believe in church organization. I love how the Bible tells us God is not the author of chaos or confusion, don't you? He's an orderly God. So today, Kim is saying, I believe in church organization, and it's my purpose to support the church by my tithes and offerings and by my personal effort and influence. Is this your belief and commitment today? Yes. Praise the Lord. How about you, friends? Number 10, this one's a little long, so hang in there with me. I believe that my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and will honor God by caring for it, avoiding the use of that which is harmful, abstaining, abstaining from all unclean foods, from the use, manufacture, or sell of alcoholic beverages, the use, manufacture, or sell of tobacco in any of its forms for human consumption, and from the misuse of or trafficking in narcotics or other drugs. It's a mouthful, but essentially we're saying because our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, by God's grace, will you strive to keep all the garbage out of your body? Yes. Amen. How about you, friends? Amen. Sounds like a good plan if it's the temple of the Holy Spirit. Number 11 says, I know and understand the fundamental Bible principles as taught by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And Kim is saying that I, I purpose by the grace of God to fulfill His will by ordering my life in harmony with these principles. Is that your belief and commitment today? Yes. Amen. How about you, friends? Number 12, I think I know the answer to this one, but I'm going to ask you anyway. It says, I accept the New Testament teaching of baptism by immersion and desire to be so baptized as a public expression of faith in Christ and his forgiveness of my sins. Kim, would you like to be baptized today? Yes. I thought that might be the answer. Praise the Lord. And number 13, this is our last one says, I accept and believe that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church of Bible prophecy. And I love this last part. This inclusive language is so beautiful, and it's directly from Scripture. It says that people of every nation, race, and language are invited and accepted into its fellowship, and I desire to be a member of this local congregation of the World Church. Kim, is that your belief? And would you like to be welcomed into full fellowship of the Pittsburgh Seventh-day Adventist Church? Amen. Amen. So friends, you have heard Kim express her public profession of faith in Jesus Christ and his teachings. She has said, I want to be a disciple, and I would like to be officially affiliated with the Pittsburgh Seventh-day Adventist Church. 
I would, move, I would ask for a motion from the floor that contingent upon her baptism that we welcome Kim into the full fellowship. They, they never let me finish. <laughs> the full fellowship of the Pittsburgh Seventh-day Adventist Church. I have a motion. I have 14 seconds. All in favor, say amen. amen. Any opposed, talk to me after church. <laughs> well, Miss Kim, I'd like to invite you to make your way back as the ladies play a little music as we get prepared. So I've already made some remarks about Kim, but one of the things that has just struck me so much is just the genuine happiness that you see coming out of her heart. And I believe when we choose to follow Jesus, when we choose to give him everything, that natural joy should flow out of us. What do you say? Why? Because as the Holy Spirit is working, we're told in the Bible very clearly that there will be fruits of the Spirit. And one of those fruits is joy and love. And Kim, I'm so happy to see that joy and love coming out of your heart. Thank you for sharing your family and friends with us today. We are so very blessed. I wonder if there's anybody here today that knows Kim and would like to stand and say, I'm here today specifically to support Kim. I'd like to see you stand just now. Because you want to follow him now and forevermore. You want, you want to walk with Jesus and be his disciple. It is truly my honor and privilege as a minister of the gospel to now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. kind is to join me at the front. Thank you. Elders, pastor, if you also join me at the front. And Miss Kim, I'm going to have you come right around here, stand in the middle. Pastor, I want you to come up nice and close. And pastor's going to have this yellow mic. And pastor, come on in, elders. Can we place our hands on you? So we're going to place our hands on Miss Kim. And what we're doing is we're consecrating her to service in God's church. As a disciple, I don't want to see Kim come and just sit and fill up this pew. I want to see her active in the church of God. Amen? I want to see her put to work. If I come back and they hadn't put you to work, talk to me. Okay, I'm going to fuss at them. I'm going to get my wet noodle out and we're going to whip them. Listen. If we're part of the body, the body should have a function. Amen? Amen? So I want to see her active in God's work. And so we're going to pray. Pastor Evan's going to pray over you. And we're going to ask for that outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that God would seal your decision, that he would guard you spiritually, and that he would just use you as his disciple, as his shining light in your family and community. So, Pastor, please, pray for our sister. Dear Almighty Father in heaven, um, this is a, a great and special day here in the Pittsburgh Church, and um, we honor and glorify you for the great work that you've done in Kim's life through the years, and especially highlighted today. Amen. May her commitment to you be solidified, strengthened, uh, may it grow even deeper than it already is. Amen. May this day be etched in her memory as something that uh, she can look back on with great fondness and joy, and that the church as a whole can remember the commitment we made to Kim also to support her, Amen. to love her, and encourage her in her work for Christ. Amen. Please send the Holy Spirit, Lord. Send Kim a double portion yes. of your spirit that she may receive a multitude of gifts may you multiply her current gifts and uh, give us strength as a church to uh, be there to encourage those gifts lord um, pour out your spirit upon everybody here lord that we can all work as a unified body to move forward your work on this earth 
In Jesus' name, amen. And Father, we continue to pray now as I lift up these cards. Father, I've not looked at them, so I don't know who has made a decision. But Father, the decisions that have been made, we're asking that you would seal those decisions in the heart and mind of each person. Amen. As Father, as we celebrate Kim, we're never going to be satisfied until we can reach one more. And when we reach one more, we're not going to rest because we need to reach one more. And Father, we just want to continue that pattern of going out into our communities, our workplaces, our homes, our family gatherings, in the grocery store, wherever we may find ourselves, living for Christ as His disciples. So Lord, as those decisions have been made and indicated on these cards today, we ask that You would seal those decisions. And Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and may you be glorified in our lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, sis. Let me give you your spiritual birth certificate, and then there's some folks that want to hug you. And as I finish up the service today, I'd like for you to stand with me at the door. And friends, I want you to come by. I don't care if you shake my hand or not, but I want you to come by and give her a hug. Amen? Amen. So meet us at the door at the end. We are going to close out our service with a song. So give some hugs.